So right now we're having events. So we have the zombie event right now. Um, I could have made it a little bit longer, I just realized. But um, potato patata, you know. Um, so rising lava again. I'm gonna wait until the meteor shower. That's probably gonna be the best event so far. Here. So we got the meteor shower now. Welcome back, guys. To a new Today we're gonna be continuing our last to leave game tutorial series. Basically, uh, we started our first tutorial um, in our previous video. We basically made the fundamentals, so like the hub and the players teleporting from the hub to the game, and then vice versa. If they leave the circle, they get teleported back to the hub, and or if they die, they also get teleported back to the hub. Uh, basically, yeah, we started the basics. Uh, right now, we're going to continue, and we're going to add more details and more features to this game. We're going to add events, like for example, the meteor shower, or zombies, or uh, rising lava, for example. So, um... Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, and then we're gonna also add like a status. It's basically like a text label, a GUI that'll basically tell what event we are currently in. All right. So let's actually get started. Now, first thing first, let's actually for the events. It's pretty helpful to actually make a um, a module script. So we're gonna have a module script right here, and then we're gonna call this events. And then we're going to use this table right here to list all of our events. And then it will list also what our event does, the functions that we call when we want to choose the event, right? So let's actually make another table just in case we have like an, uh, another set of events. For example, there's a different, for example, there's different type of events, for example, an event that affects players, for example, giving a player a speed coil or increasing the jump height of a bunch of players for example or we could have uh, events for basically everyone where we have like meteor showers for example or zombies uh etc so let's just call this circle events right set it to a table and then we can list all of our uh events so the first one i'm gonna try to do a uh, rising lava event all right so set this to another table now we're going to have some properties. So the description will be what will appear when what will appear on the screen when uh, this event starts. So we'll set it to a string. We'll just say lava will rise soon. Like that. Lava will rise soon. All right. Comma. And then we can actually add the function. So function equals function. All right. So what we can do for this one is we'll make a function where we have uh, structures or like towers or something like that people can climb through or like parkour um, obstacles basically. And then we'll make them rise slowly from the ground up to the top, basically like an animation. And we let the players right climb up and then the lava can rise uh, soon after. All right, so can I just get any uh, tower you want? I'll just search for some pre-models. I'll go to my uh, recent models. Uh, let me see. So. Um, this one also found um, some classic buildings like this one over here, which is pretty cool. So we're just going to get some buildings from this map over here. So let's just get this one right here. I like this one. So let me see where it is. So the tower. Let's actually move this away. Let's put this in workspace. Now we can delete this. So we've got some towers. You can really add whatever you want, um, but you're just going to have going to use the same steps that I'm doing. So I'm going to add this. Uh, we might actually this is a good size it can fit in the circle. This one might just need to be a bit smaller. I feel actually no, it's no, nah, no, nah, nah, it's too small, uh, too big. Uh, yeah, so um, you can add as much um, towers you want. Oops, add as much towers you want. And you know, what's pretty cool. I, I didn't know you can actually change the select color It used to be blue, you can actually change to any color you want. So it's pretty cool. Um, anyways, so let's resize this to a good size. Now, once you're done choosing all the structures you want for your rising lava event, what you can do or what you should do is select all the towers, group them into one group, and then just name it like obstacles or not obstacles like structures. Basically, right now, 
Most importantly, what you want to do is choose one part to be the primary part of the structure. The reason we do this is so we can actually move this part along with all the other parts in this entire module uh, or not module model, but uh, you move it from the bottom to the top so you can basically animate it going from the top uh, from the bottom to the top. So for for me, I would just put it to the bottom part. This would be more easier to actually uh, basically manage. Um, so to go, you select this, go to the actual module, select primary part and put it as uh, the primary part you want. It's better if you wanted to do it the one closest to the ground or basically on the ground. Um, and what we want to do is basically you want to set it like by default here. And then you want to move it slowly. Once the event starts, you want to move it slowly to the top like that. That's basically what they do in the original game. So it's pretty cool. So let's actually put this here and we'll make a for loop for it to move upwards. Now, what's really important is you want to make sure all the uh, parts in the model are anchored. So you can do um, alt, hold alt, and then select it like this and then make sure all the parts are anchored. So select anchored, make it true like that. All right now when you're done, uh, put it back where it was like this is good. I mean, it actually doesn't matter because we're going to be manipulating it in the script anyways, but just put it like here. All right. And we'll put this in replicated storage. So now what we can do, actually, let's name this uh, events. For rising lava. All right. So let's do lo local structures equals game that replicated storage dot structures clone structures that parent equal workspace or game that workspace i think it's the same thing to be honest um all right so what we're going to do is we're going to actually get the bottom position of the primary part so let's go to the structure and to the primary part which should be actually let's put it in workspace so it's easier so the workspace right here should be our primary part was right here. I think if I wasn't wrong, this was our primary part. Um, so our bottom position is right here. Negative 24 was run to negative 24, honestly. And then we're going to make it rise up to around. Oops, did not mean to do that, but we'll make it rise. Once it's on the ground. I don't know why it's like this. Okay. Uh, this is going to be at the position two of the Y axis. Make sure it's the Y axis, by the way. So it's in the second term, right? So now we know what numbers we have to actually choose. It's from negative 24 to two. So what we can do is do four I equals negative 24 and two, and then it will go on an increment to 0 0.02 or 0 0.01. Uh, usually the smaller the increment, the smoother it is. All right. And then we'll do like a weight 0 0.01, something like that. Now what we can do is do structures or ah, structures that primary part, the primary part, I actually don't need to do dot primary part, you can do set primary part C frame. And then you make a new C frame, but I'm not sure if this is da, 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 da. that's just strange. Oops, let's move this back to replicated storage. Okay, because I was wondering why it didn't All right. So set primary part C frame. Um, I, apparently it's deprecated, but uh, it still works. So it doesn't really matter. Make a new C frame, C frame dot new and then vector three dot new, which is a position value. It's uh, X, Y, Z. So the X and Z, we don't want to move, but only the Y. So remember how I got the position of the entire model, the structures. I only got the position of the Y axis of the, the Y position, right? Which if I'm not too sure, yes, it's in the bottom position. So right now, oh, is this, that is strange. Okay. So right here. It's the y axis. So we, this is the only thing that moves when we move it up. 
So we're only going to move the Y axis, not the, uh, not the X or not the Z, just the Y axis, right? So if you can actually look at the actual position of the model, you will see it's only moving in the Y axis. So this is the one that you actually want to pay attention to. This is the one you want to actually see. So the, the first position would be negative 25 of the Y axis. And the last position, the final position will be two in the Y axis. So this is why we chose negative 24 too. We just round up, uh, round it around, uh, round it, round it a bit, but uh, should be fine. Anyways, so again, we do structures that position uh, or that primary part dot position dot x because we're not changing it. Now we do i for the y axis and the same thing here. Z. All right, so that's pretty, pretty simple. Nothing much to it, really. And we added a weight. Oops, let's make this a bit more organized. So just looking at it, looks pretty, uh, looks pretty correct to me. All right, so now we have this. Now what we can do is add lava. Now actually, we can test this right now, just make sure. Um, da, 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 let me see. <laughs> All right, looks good. So we can test this out right now. And to do that, we actually have to call it because this is a module script and it doesn't actually run. We have to go to the original script that we scripted, like the player entered, the player exited, if you remembered. Now, what we can do is get the um, the events uh, module. So local events equals require game dot server script service dot events, right? Now we can do a loop if you want. So while like wait for do, and then we'll do events dot circle events dot rising lava then dot func, and that's the function. All right. Um, let's do wait six just so we can actually um, load in. Let's put this back in replicated storage. I forgot to do that. That was my bad. By default, before you run the game, you should put it in replicated storage. Okay, we wait a bit. And then it should move. It seems like it's moving too slow, so we can actually increase this. You can actually see it's moving a bit too slow. So obviously, if that happens to you, just um, change the numbers a bit. So for example, 0 0.1 might be too um, too slow for you. So we can do 0 0.5 or is this 0 0.1, not 0 0.01. I did 0 0.01. I'm going to change it to 0 0.1, which makes it a bit more faster. I'm not sure if it's the... I couldn't make it also just generally faster. So yeah, it was a bit faster. Um, you probably don't want it this slow. As you can see, it's kind of rising up and it's going to reach to the point where it's all on the ground on the surface. That's not going to happen because we didn't make the rising lava yet. But what you can also do if you don't want to increase the increment. Let's say you want to to be 0 0.01, but you can just change this to just uh, put nothing and it will automatically default to like a small number or something like that. I'm not sure if this actually will work better, but I'll see. We'll see actually. Da, 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 let me see. Yeah, it's still pretty slow. So what we're going to do instead of that, we'll actually keep this the same. Let's do like a weight, the default amount, and then we'll increase this by like one, five or two, which should be a good amount. Um, but yeah, that should be good enough. Um, so now let's actually do the lava. We're going to enter. Um, actually, what you can do instead is copy this right circle. Name this lava, the cylinder, basically. Then we can make it anything, of course, make it a little, uh, less transparent. And then we can add like whatever you want, like, I don't know, whatever you want, marble, like it doesn't really matter. So this will be like the lava that rises up. So let's actually put this back in. These structures will be on here, then we can actually see where 
we want the lava to be at its highest point. So it's going to start at the bottom right here. And then we're gonna, probably going to make it rise until like here. This is probably a good height. So right now, again, we just get the lie axis of the lava. So the size, uh, not the size, sorry, the position. Now, this is just a part. So we don't actually have to care about the primary part C frame or the primary part at all. It's just a part. So for the position, this is at negative 29. Now, the only reason is that, yeah, it's at negative 29 because it's kind of large. Um, but it doesn't really matter. You can like make it if you actually make this smaller. If I actually make this smaller. That is strange. Uh, yeah, if I make this smaller, let me see. Can I make this? Yeah, make this shorter, I guess. Uh, the position will also of the y axis will also change because I changed the y axis of the cylinder. It's kind of weird, but whatever. You get the position of the y axis. It's right now it's negative uh, nine. Um, that's the highest point. The lowest where it's at its lowest is negative twenty one. So negative twenty one to negative nine is where we're gonna is the range of where we're gonna move, All right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do. Let's put these back in replicated storage. So. Oh yeah, and make sure the lava, make sure the lava right here, make sure this is anchored, right? Uh, not can collidable. I mean, that's preferable uh, and that should be good. Yeah. So we put this back in replicated storage. So now let's just wait a bit, like wait two, and then local lava equal game that replicate storage dot lava clone. And then we do the same thing, basically what we did here. So instead it's going to be four I equals negative 21, negative nine, and then let's do 0 0.2 again. And then wait, um, this will be a bit slower, I feel. So we're going to do like 0 0.05 maybe. Then now what we can do is do lava. Wait, first let's parent it to workspace lava dot parent equals game dot workspace. Now we change the uh, we can change the position if you want. So lava to bus po position equals vector three dot new. And then we'll do x we keep it the same. So lava to position dot x I lava dot oops dot position dot uh, z. All right, so this should work. And once we're done, we just destroy everything. So wait one. Structures destroy. Lava destroy. Let's see if this works. So we set the position of the lava to its changing value of the Y, right? Keep the Z and the X the same. Let's see if this works. Let's clean this up a bit. Okay. Let's play. Okay. Now let's wait for it to rise. So this is a pretty good. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty good speed. Now we're gonna wait for the lava. Let's see. Oops. Yeah, that's way too fast. Uh, I think I should make this lower. And I was kind of lagging too. That's kind of strange. So we're going to actually, instead of this, negative 20, I think it was negative 20 point. Oops, that's that was my bad. I did a point instead of a comma. That's supposed to be a comma. My bad. My bad. Uh, so negative 21, negative 9, 0 0.05. Right. All right. Now it should be slower now. As you can see, it's a pretty good speed. I would say you might make it uh, a bit slower. It might be a bit too fast, but uh, yeah. So you just change the change the numbers a bit. So for example, if you want it to be more slower, it's usually better to change lower the increment. I would say that's probably your best bet. Um, but yeah, so this is pretty pretty um, pretty good for the rising lava. Now, obviously, the last thing you really need to do is make a damage script for the lava. You can easily get this from like a model. So like damage script. 
blood on damage, fall damage, fall damage. Uh, did did nope. Let's do damage brick. Let me see if there's actually a better brick. Yeah, let me use a different script actually for this. Uh, this looks pretty. Uh, yeah, this looks pretty, pretty simple. Not this BS, but we can use uh, delete this and paste this into here. Let's see if this is the. Yeah, this is the same one. This is a very simple damage script. It's usually this better. Um, but we can test this out real quick and then we're going to start on our uh, zombie event. All right, let's wait for the lava. So if I go to the lava, oh, it actually kills us automatically. I uh, usually want to add a debounce or something like that. So what do you call it? Debounce. Okay, so debounce. Do, do, do. Local DB. Cool. False. And then, if not DB, then, or if DB, then return. Then return. Right? But if it's, if there's no cooldown, if there's no debounce, then debounce equals true. Then wait however much. Wait, ah, wait, one might be too much. Maybe wait 0.5 or 2.5, maybe. All right, then DB equals false. Uh, they're just basically a cooldown you add to it, uh, which can be a bit better. It's not the most optimal. Personally, I wouldn't use this because it's on the server, um, but it still works better. Let's see if this works better, actually. I mean, if you want, you can actually make it so you can die instantly. It's not really a huge problem, but I feel like for me, I'll just make it damage. I want to actually make it kill you, though. I don't know. Yeah, so it's kind of. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I'm dead. I'm so dead. OK, so yeah, we get the idea. So now let's actually make a. Let's actually make a zombie event. So basically what we're going to do is going to spawn a bunch of zombies in the middle of the circle, and then we're going to make people basically try to survive the zombie attack. All right. So we can actually search up the zombie model. Uh, you can use this one, probably not the best one you can you might want to use a better one. Um, zombie spawner or just use like a normal zombie like this one that attacks. Um, maybe it might be might not be the best. So like, for example, if I use I'm not sure if this will work. Let's see. Oh, that's a lot. Me and replicated storage. Yeah, this is a whole new different system. So let's forget about this. Okay. So we can just use this. It might be not it might not be the best uh model to use, but um I think it works. Um so let's actually just rename this to zombie so it's easier to actually reference it. And then you put this in replicated storage. So now for events, we'll make a new event. So put a comma here. And then you do all the zombies to a new table description will be description equals zombies will begin to attack all right funk stand front equals function all right uh, i forgot to put a comma here okay so for the function what we want to do is basically we want to spawn a bunch of zombies so let's say we'll make a a variable called amount amount will be like for example three and then let's get the zombie in replicated storage game dot replicated storage dot zombie and then we'll basically make a loop so four four i equals one three do one three do and then we clone the zombie so local z clone stands for zombie clone equals uh, zombie clone and what we can do is get the humanoid root part and we set it to somewhere around the middle of the um, the circle right here, the cylinder, and then kind of offset it a bit. So the zombies don't like literally spawn on top, like inside of each other or whatever. So we just kind of want to offset it a bit uh, with the position. So we'll go back here. Z clone. 
dot uh i'm not sure if, yeah c frame do c frame equal c frame dot new all right let me see i right, okay uh we want a vector c value so it's a position value vector c dot new all right and x uh, and z will basically be very similar we want to get the middle of this cylinder and we can just do um the position so circle dot position let's actually get the circle let's make it a variable local circle equal game dot circle or game dot workspace dot circle my bad right vector three dot no circle dot position dot x plus math at random one to six so we just offset a bit by a random number basically uh, and for this one, for Y, what we do for Y, actually, we do sim something similar for Z. So let's just do that. So let's just put it for zero right now. And then we do the same thing here. So we just change Z. All righty. All righty. Okay. Now for the Y, we want to put it somewhere in the middle. Um... Well, it's going to be the Y. Oh, it's going to be around the middle anyways, in terms of the Z and X axis. But the Y is going to be like the vertical uh, position. Now, since this is kind of like underground, we do want to put it a little bit up. So it's not like stuck inside the base plate. But we also don't want it to put like in the middle of the sky. So it falls like something's coming from the sky or something. So we're going to put it around like near the ground. So what we're going to do is do let me see so here so we would do uh circle dot position dot y which would be around i would say it's the center so it's going to be around like here it's going to be around here so we kind of want to lower it down a bit what you can do is probably do like um circle dot position dot y and divided by third so a third of its height maybe or a fourth of its height um, but if this cylinder, if your circle is kind of like already on the ground, um, you can probably just do it divided by two. So it's you subtract half of its height, which can be really like on top of the ground. It should be on top of the ground, but usually just try to do a bit above the ground. That's what I would do. So for the y uh, position, circle that position that y minus circle that size dot y divided by two i don't know if i said position dot y or size dot y if i said position dot y i divide by two then i was wrong it was i meant size but yeah um let's do three just so it's not all the way to the ground or four if you want three should be good three should be good so a third of its uh of this height okay so now the last thing we need to do for the y is we want to multiply this by the up vector of the cylinder. So actually, let's put this in brackets so it's easier to read. And we will do circle dot c frame dot up vector, and we multiply that by the actual position of the just the base position of where we want the zombie to be. The reason why we do up vector is so we want the um, so we make the zombie basically upright. We don't want the zombies be in any orientation we want. We want it to be upright, like standing, basically. You don't want it lying down or just, you know, all crazy. Just so it actually looks better. Um, but yeah, up vector basically gets the up vector. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's the up vector. It's kind of self-explanatory. All right, now I can just parent it to workspace. Workspace. And then let's also make a table local zombies equals this so we put all our zombies in this table uh or table answer i should say zombies right we can do game that works face okay now once we're done let's let's wait like four ah, let's wait six okay and then for I Z in pairs, zombies do Z destroy. We remove all the zombies once we're done the event. 
All right, so let's see if this works. Now, let's go back here, and then we're going to, instead of rising level, we'll do zombies. We're basically just testing this out so far. Uh, this is a separate uh, C frame, C frame, the humanoid. I think I've done, sorry, that's my mistake. It's humanoid root part. It's that humanoid root part. All right, there we go. Da, 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 da. There we go. Now they spawn. They're basically chasing after me. Now, I, as I said, this is not the best model because apparently they attack each other and it's kind of weird. Um, not the best, but still works. So you have zombies, you can definitely add more. You can probably increase the offset. They spawn from each other if you want. Or maybe you can make them spawn in random locations. That's completely fine. Um, that's probably even better, to be honest. We're going to work on our third and final event. So now we're going to do Meteor Shower. Meteor Shower. Okay. Description. Meteors will start falling. Funk equals function. Now what we can do for this one. I actually made a similar event with my boss battle tutorial. What we can do is make a, a part. We're going to make a sphere for actual uh, meteor. Color it, whatever, you know what I'm saying? This might be two. Ah, this is good enough. All right. And then also a... Now make sure this is, first of all, let's make this... Uh, first of all, can collide. We won't make it anchored, but you do want it to be false with can collide. And that should be it if I'm not wrong. Okay. Now we make a cylinder. Get the cylinder tilted a bit. All right. So if you wanted to make it fit the size of the meteor, let's change the color real quick. You want to make it change the size. Uh, you want the size to fit the meteor. So it actually kind of makes sense. So the meteor basically falls on this um you can actually or you can just what you can do is right now is actually get the horizontal side of this like 17.6 actually i don't know if this is the yeah okay this might be well and then change this to all the shapes so 17.6 for example you can change this actually no that doesn't work you have to do it 17.6 17.6 17.6 and that should fit it. I think I'm not right. Yeah, it should fit it like perfectly inside this cylinder. Let's just move it up a bit. But yeah, basically, yeah, you get what I mean. What I mean. Um, okay, perfect. Make this cylinder anchored. Uh, not can collidable, but anchored. Let's name this meteoric ground or, or crater. You can say crater, actually. Crater. Crater. I don't know how to spell crater. Uh, meteor. Meteor, meteor. Okay, all right. So now let's put both of these in replicate storage. You want to find a random position for the meteor to fall. So we're gonna do look on meteor, meteor. I don't know how to spell meteor. Equal game that replicates order that meteor. Local creator equals game that replicates order that creator. And then amounts, let's do like 10 meteors. Local amount equals 10. 4i equals one amount do. Local m clone for meteor clone equals meteor clone. Local creator clone. C clone equal creator clone. Now, for this, actually, what we can do instead is we'll get a part for the range of where the meteors will fall, right? 
so we can make a range so i think it's better to actually make a like a solid part instead of this uh cylinder because with this cylinder it's very easy to actually like for a meteor to fall like around these corners right here which you kind of don't want it's going to be pretty useless uh so we're going to make a part real quick a block put this in the center let me see center 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 uh make this right now let's make this a bit transparent can collide equals false anchor equals true i will make this we won't make it completely cover like the entire circle but you don't also want it to be like missing huge portions of the uh circle so it will basically provide like the players like a cheating mechanism whatever and um, this should be good enough for the range you don't have to make it like tall or anything, but it's just a good, uh, basically like a good, uh, how do I say it? A blueprint for where the uh, meteor should fall. This should be the range of where the me meteor should fall. So let's call this range. All right. Now local, let's do a random point. So to get this, we'll do equal C frame or not C frame. Let's actually do vector three. Vector three, not new. And then we get new X position, right? Now we just need X and uh, Z, not Y. We don't need Y. So for the X position, we'll do, let's first get a, a close game dot replicate storage dot is a uh, range. Or not replicate storage. Why did I do replicate storage? It's workspace dot range. So get the, uh, get a, we get the range part, range dot X or the position that x and then we subtract it by the size half of its size so it's going to be either like this x minus half of its size so it's going to go to this point and then for the um other point is going to be x position dot x and then plus half of its size uh it's going to go to this point so we're going to choose a random point from this to here and we're going to do the same thing with the z axis we're going to choose a random point from this point to this point. So you choose a random point around this area. Right. And I actually don't put this here. We're going to do a math that random because it's going to be a random, right? A random point. So from position dot X minus range dot size divided by two, dot X divided by two. And then comma, the other side of the part, which is the same thing right here, but we just add the half of its size. So it's the other end of the part. Now this is for the X axis. Let's do the same thing for the uh, Z axis actually. Now we're gonna skip the Y real quick. So just for Y do comma zero, just as a placeholder for now. And then for the Z axis do position dot Z size at z okay okay that should be right that should be right all right so now for this y um actually yeah for y actually gonna keep it zero we're gonna keep it zero for now um the zero should be around let me see so if you have just an empty base plate like this it should be around like where the floor is if you move the floor a bit higher obviously just get the y position of your floor of your floor of, or of your ground basically um just change it to whatever your floor is like around here this should be zero x y equals zero should be the floor right here so i made this zero right i made this right here zero because that's basically where the floor is um we're gonna get this so we can actually know where the craters are for the meteors obviously we're gonna just increase that by like 100 or so so it falls from the sky all right so we got the random point M clone that C frame equals C frame dot new and then ran point and then we increase it obviously so it falls from the sky we increase it only the y axis we make it higher meanwhile this the crater clone that C frame equals C frame dot new oops C frame dot new ran point and the only thing we need um is change the orientation of this um crater 
because when we make a new three frame it probably will default it to like this position i think uh so we might just need to so as you can see the orientation is at 90 on the z-axis 90 degrees so i think it's radians though i'm not sure it's degrees so we'll just do c frame that angles um by default you always do uh you always convert to radians when you um uh, do c frame the angles it's just better that way so see uh map that rad 90 degrees radians or yeah 90 oh it's, isn't it 90 degrees would be the same thing i don't actually have no idea i failed math and no, i'm joking but uh yeah so forgot to put a comma here but yeah so you get 90 degrees converted radians c frame the angles times c frame of the crater and then we did, 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 cl uh, parented to workspace and clone that parent equals workspace c clone that parent workspace um i don't know if you, you can do like workspace or game that workspace see what's what works for you by default i always do like game that workspace i just feel like it's safer um, and then you can put and again like a, what we did for the zombies make a table local uh stuff or uh, uh, more meteors meteors whatever and then we do table that insert again table that insert meteors m clone table that insert meteors c clone and at the end for i part in pairs meteors do p destroy and you're done right um last thing obviously make a bit of a weight like 0.75 inside the loop so it's not just all going at the same time you want a bit of a delay and that should be good to go let's test this out and see if it works um and last thing you need let's also we can add a uh damage script but let's test this out first and then we can add the damage script Put this crater in replicated storage like always all right and let's test this out oh wait i forgot uh, i do need to change what's in the script right now it's just doing the zombie event so let's actually stop and change the event we're running let's do your shot okay now I'll, I'll also show you how you can make it randomized so random events all the time so don't worry about that. It's pretty, pretty simple. Let's see. So as you can see, it's random craters falling from the sky. I think I made it too big. Uh, too big. Uh, um, obviously, you can change the size if you want. Change the crater and the meteor together. Um, just make sure, obviously, like the size kind of fits with the meteor. It makes sense like that. I don't know if there is. Okay, that was just. Uh, so yeah, you can change the size if you want. So let's get this out. Definitely make it smaller. So change, actually change the circle, change the meteor first. Like this is probably, um, yeah, this is probably good. Uh, and then you get 11.26 for our size. Now the size is the same in all axis for the sphere. Now just changes on the Z or Y. Actually, I don't know if this will, let's do 11.26, 11 uh, 11.26 11 for Y and Z. This should fit like that. Know, basically yeah so yeah um now we just need a damage script or a kill script actually a kill script would probably be make more sense let's do a kill script yeah kill brick let's insert the it should be good this bit be good okay uh copy the script put it inside the Oops, what did I do? Nope, I did not mean to do that. My bad. Oh my god, did I actually remove? Okay, I copied it by accident. I copied something else by accident now. Okay. Get this meteor paste into. Alright, so you got the kill code. Should work. Why do I have a spawner? Okay, that's weird. I think that was from the zombie thing I inserted. Okay, yeah. Let me remove that. I don't need that. Then we can put all this in replicated storage. 
Now, what we can do is go to the zone and or the zone, the actual server, the script and server script service. We're going to choose a random uh, event every time, every time it loops. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a local events table or circle events table, circle, circle events equals table. Oops. And then for I C E in pairs, circle event in pairs, events, dot circle events do. All right. Or actually I would be circle event name. So uh event name. And then C and then info. So event info. Right. So an event name would be the name. So meteor shower zombies rising level for example let's actually minimize all of these so it kind of looks cleaner to have all these events we will insert the names of these into a table so we can have like access to the names and then we can use we pick a random event from the names right the table of names and then we can uh get uh then we can fire the events on this module script from the names that we randomly picked so table insert uh, event, uh, circle events, event name. Okay, so now we made a table with all the event names. Now we just choose a random event. So local rand event, well, math dot random or not math dot random, but circle events brackets math dot random one two number of circle events. So we'll choose a random circle event from the circle event. It's basically the event names. Uh, and then random event, we'll just do dot or not dot, but uh, square brackets. And then uh, not meteor shower, but random event. Okay, so now every time it should bring us a random event. Let's see if this works. First try. So right now it spawns zombies. Let's see what's our second event. Looks like meteor shower next. I'm waiting for some rising lava. There we go. We got some rising lava. Now, last last thing we need to do is add a label status. That shows what events we have. Very, 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 very simple. It's like easy peasy lemon squeezy. So we don't have to worry about this. So right now it's going to kill us. And once we die, basically. Okay, yeah, there's a, still the cooldown with the lava. And once we, as you can see, actually, it should say, yeah, it's going to teleport us. If we were in the game, we would be in the hub right now. So for the label, let's make a string value we're going to call the status and in star UI make a screen UI then a text label okay and then we're going to change the size let's make the anchor point point five position point five and then point one Point 0.5 for the size and then point 0.1 for the size as well. Make this uh, text scaled. Gotham. Bold is nice. Uh, yeah, you can have that, I guess. Let me see it then. Status. And then make this background transparency equals to 1. It should be good. Make a local script. Local status val or status. So game dot replica storage wait for child status. And then local uh, label equals script dot parent uh, label dot text equals status dot value status dot chain connect function. Let's put V for the new value label dot text equal V. 
Now just go to the script. Not this one. Oops. Go to the script. If, before we fire the event, we're going to change the status value. So game that replicate sword that status equals random event dot description. And this should work perfectly fine. Um, actually, it's not random event. It's going to be, we're going to use the module script, sorry. The random event is just the name of the event. So we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Basically, basically copy this actually. What am I doing? Yep. There you go. So we get the actual event from this module script. For example, rising lava. We get the description. Lava will rise soon, for example. You can make it as much as you want. Uh, as much as you want. You can make this whatever you want. You can make the description whatever the hell you want, honestly. It's that value, my bad. And this should work. So meteors will start falling. As you can see, there's that label. You might make this a bit higher and then it's white. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, black just looks weird. Black Texas looks weird. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I think. Yeah, so uh, you might want to change that uh, after the event is done. Maybe like change it to like just nothing or space. So we can just do like, for example, uh, yeah, like that, like this, just like nothing. And the local script, da, 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 yeah, you can change the text wherever you want. Uh, change the text color to white. It's kind of, it's been kind of bothering me. I'm going to be honest. Okay. Let's make this smaller. I want to make this, uh, yeah, let's make this 0 0.07 maybe. This is a good uh this is a good size. Um all right. I think that's pretty much it. I was thinking about the zombie thing. Could have made this better, so I'll try I wonder if I can try to do from negative from negative eight to from negative six to six. And then instead same thing here. Negative six to six, sorry, not negative. What was I doing? Yeah, negative six to six and negative six to six as well for X and Z. Uh, I'm not sure if we can actually pick a number from negative to positive. So let's see if this actually works. Because these zombies were usually really close to each other. I wonder if, they, yeah, so that works actually a bit better now. Uh, but yeah, so now we're going to test it out with other players. And we'll see how that goes. So we are back. In this actual game with a bunch of um, people, fans uh, of the channel. Remember me when you're famous. Yeah, sure. No props. I um, So Rising Lava again. I'm going to wait until the Meteor Shower. That's probably going to be the best event so far. Yeah, this guy's dead. This guy's dead. Pro weird reason. Oh, did he leave? Probably left. Or maybe he died. I don't know. Ah, sure, but it really doesn't matter. So, we got the meteor shower now. I think someone died. Yeah, she's gonna get teleported back. So, there's only four people now. Me included. Rising lava again. Definitely could improve with this game, definitely. It's not, it's gonna be a really simple demonstration. It's not gonna be a total game, but you can definitely improve on this, to be honest. This is just a simple demonstration tutorial, so it's pretty cool. So we got four people left, and that's pretty much it, really. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want, you can join our Discord server and you can be in videos like this one right here. See all these people, these are people are in my Discord. That's how they uh, join in our videos, basically. Um, but yeah, join our Roblox game uh, or Roblox group, I should say, if you want as well. Uh, we're making some uh, we're making some new games uh, on the group, so that's pretty interesting. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Give suggestions as well if you want. Uh, and yeah, see you guys in the next one.